So Megan Thee Stallion has taken a stand in the trial. The people versus Tory Lanez or State of California versus Tory Lanez. Hey, and she said a lot. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's really serious. And I, to a point, I feel bad for her. Hey everyone, it's your girl, Miss Anna Little Cole. I'm coming to you straight out of NYC on this cloudy, dreary Friday evening. So, I'm going to read to you from NPR because the way NPR really broke this down, you know, I'm going to, I, I'm not a big, I'm not really huge on Megan Thee Stallion. I'm going to be honest with you. But no one deserves to be assaulted. Let alone, you know, shot at, harmed, you know, or the worst of the worst. Regardless, whether you loathe the person, hate them, can't stand them, no one deserves to be harmed. Okay? So, according to NPR.org, it reads, Megan Thee Stallion takes a stand in Tory Lane's trial. Shares certain thoughts. I can't say it because of um, algorithm reasons. Megan Thee Stallion took the stand as a witness for the prosecution during the assault trial of singer Tory Lanez in Los Angeles Superior Court today. Speaking for the first time in explicit detail about the night Lanez allegedly shot the Houston rapper in the feet in 2020 and the events residual effects on her career and her life. As the key witness for the prosecution, the Houston rapper, real name Megan Describes her account on of the night of July 12, 2020, saying on record that the assault was a result of an argument she had with Lane's real name Daystar Peterson and Kelsey Harris, her former best friend and assistant, while driving home from Hollywood Hills pool party in the early morning hours, wearing a purple suit, red bottom, black stilettos, and a black bob hairstyle. Pete, 27, testified that the shooting and its aftermath have impacted her health, both physically and mentally. I can't even be happy, she said, her voice breaking during her afternoon testimony. I can't hold conversations with people for a long time. I don't feel like I want to be on this earth. Oh, I wish he would have just, like, blinked, shot, and just, you know, unalived me. If I knew I would go through this torture, the Grammy winner recounted that she and Peterson had an intimate but not exclusive relationship in 2020, one that Harris did not know about at the time. Pete knew Harris had a crush on Tori, so she hid the relationship. When asked specifically why she had not previously revealed the nature of her relationship with Peterson, Pete said she was embarrassed because it's disgusting at this point. How could I share my body with someone who could do this to me? The fight in the vehicle started when Peterson hinted at the relationship to Harris and then tried to pit the two women against each other, calling them bitches and hoes in the car. Peter testified, Pete testified that after exiting the vehicle for a second time, the drive on the drive home, Peterson shouted at her dance, bitch, then fired five shots at her. From the passenger side, striking her in the feet. I felt shocked. I felt hurt. I wasn't sure if this was really happening. I looked at my feet. I saw the blood. And I fell to the ground. The WAP star testified. When expressly asked about changing her story to police denied the shooting from stepping on from stepping in glass to allegedly being shot by Peterson, Pete gave context for her choice. In the moment, stating her distrust of the police. I don't feel safe in the car. I don't feel safe with the police, Pete said between tears as she described the aftermath of the incident. When responding officers had her, Peterson, Harris, and Jaquan Smith, Peterson's bodyguard stepped out of the vehicle. They were stopped in. Pete, who shared that she's grown up deeply suspicious of cops, said that 
Warrenness was further stoked by the 2020 climate, George Floyd, Floyd's murder, and subsequent Black Lives Matter protests. In the Black community, in my community, it's not really acceptable to be cooperating with police officers. Pete then spoke briefly about how women aren't believed when they speak out. George Medesian, Peterson's attorney, objected on the grounds that the comment was Tangent, tan, tangential to the case. Tangential to the case. Beyond fear of the police and questions surrounding survivor credibility, Pete also shared the concern that implicating Peterson could negatively impact the career hip hop. This situation has only been worse for me and it has only made him more famous, Pete said during morning testimony. Because I was shot, I've been turned into some kind of villain, and he's the victim. This has messed up my whole life. This whole situation in the industry is like a big boys club. I'm telling on one of y'all friends, now you're all about to hate me. Pete testified that she crawls into the driveway to the left of the SUV after being shot, but eventually got back into the car. In her testimony, she said that as the group drove away, Peterson immediately told Harris and Pete that he would give them each $1 million if they didn't tell police and said he was on probation for a prior weapons offense. Throughout the trial, Peterson's defense has repeatedly said that Peterson was never on probation. The afternoon cross-examination reached a boiling point when defense attorney Magdessian implied in his questioning that Pete's career has taken off since the shooting and even used scared quotes around the world. Shot. Pete replied, why did you do this? Just your scare quote. I got shot. While Pete was on the stand, Peterson, wearing a cream suit and white turtleneck, sat quietly in the defense chair, taking notes sporadically and avoiding all eye contact with her. Pete also shared new details around her contact with Peterson after the night, saying that he continued to contact her following the shooting took place to apologize. According to Pete, he texted her from an unknown number to say he was watching her during the Instagram live and could see the pain in my eyes. She said that she thought, why are you bothering me? Why are you being weird? You just shot me and now you're telling me you're watching me? Because social media has played a critical role in catalyzing public debate of this case. Pete's revelation that Peterson watched her on Instagram is especially striking. With every development of this case, many media personalities and outlets, specifically gossip blogs, have shared unsubstantiated information that caused debate on social media from the validity of both Pete and Peterson's versions of events. That online public debate materialized in real life as supporters of both artists flocked outside of the courthouse for testimony. Peterson is facing three felony charges, assault with a semi-automatic firearm, possession of a concealed unregistered firearm, negligent discharge of a firearm. If convicted, Peterson faces up to 22 years in prison and on possible Deportation back to Canada. Oh, wow. Kelsey Harris is set to be called to the witness stand by the prosecution on Wednesday, December 14, 2022. Yeah, this is no joke. Um, First of all, I feel sorry for Meg to a point. And I'm going to explain to you why I say to a point. Because the woman got shot, okay? You could look and see... That she got shot. If you look at the photos of her foot, you could tell there were bullet fragments that entered bullets into her um her ankles. And you could look at like when they were stitching her up, you could tell it was bullets. It was due to bullets. Um, I also feel bad for her because, you know, the stress of it all. People were coming at her and basically wishing her to DIE. Many people were saying, you know, you're snitching on a black man. You're trying to send a black man to prison. Um, you know, the black woman can't be trusted when it comes to the black man. Um, she's doing this so that she can move up in her career. And she's sacrificing Tori's career so that she become um, a superstar. And also, she was throwing Kelsey on the bus. These were people were saying. So her feeling like she has S thoughts. I'm not surprised because they're all crying about the situation and how she was saying that, you know, 
she wished she wasn't famous. She wishes that she wasn't, you know, here. You know, she wishes that she, like, she can't even be happy. Like, you don't even really see her really out with partisan, you know? So that's why I feel bad for her. Here's why I don't feel bad for her. None of you all, including Megan, was real and straightforward with the situation. Okay? There was no need to really... Okay. Kelsey supposedly was dealing with Tori. And then you basically intercepted and you did something with this man. Just to have fun. Now, some people say it was actually a threesome that they had together. I don't know if it's true or not. But the thing about it is, is that if you know that your homegirl got a crush on this guy, you don't interfere and basically go behind your homegirl's back, sample the goods, and then not even tell her. But she got to find out in a weird kind of way. And then you got the guy in the car trying to stop the fight. Because really what really happened, they fought over the whole situation. And somehow or another, it went from a fight to a gun to somebody getting shot and somebody saying, dance, bitch. Okay. And there's footage of her basically moving. Jumping up and down. Like, it's a weird kind of thing. And it's funny because they all came from Carl, I mean, Kylie Jenner's home. And it seems like it was starting there because Tori was talking to Kylie. Because at that time, Kylie and Travis, they took a break. So, it's really interesting, that dynamic. And this is why a lot of people say, you know, the Kardashians, they got some wicked energy. Because the root of it. All stemmed from Tori talking to Kylie at her party. And how Megan was being really cool with Kylie. And this is why I don't really feel fully bad for her. Because you're a social climber, Meg. You went from hanging out with the young lady who was, um, I can't think of her name, Jordan. Jordan Woods. You went from hanging out with her, calling her your best friend. Then you switching up and now you hanging out with Kylie and Kylie and Jordan were best friends for years. That's fake. Then let's talk about the original Kelsey. The original Kelsey was her homegirl from Houston. That was her best friend for years. They even went to um, Texas Southern University and then all of a sudden they're not friends anymore. And now a new Kelsey comes along and that's her best friend. And people think that that's the Kelsey from day one. No. That's a different Kelsey. Then in between that, remember she was real cool with Nicki Minaj and then she was talking bad about Nicki. I mean, talking bad about Cardi B. And Nicki wasn't really talking bad about Cardi B at that conversation. Did the song Hot Girl Summer. And really that's what established her and made mainstream take make take attention, to make, take notice of. Her. And then a whole summer later, around the time of, you know, the dance bitch thing, she working with Cardi and they, she gets another number one. So she has social climbing things with her. And I think with the whole thing with Tory Lanez, I think she was hanging out with him because they met on Quarantine Radio, which was his station on Instagram. I believe that she was with him because at the time he had a bigger name than her. And he had been in the industry for almost, at that time, you could say like no, almost eight years. So it was like, let me just, you know, hang out with him and, you know, buddy with him because she's about being around people with big names. But look what it did. Look what it got you. And my whole thing is, I don't understand. What is it that they saw Peterson have that these girls really want? I mean, he's like five feet five. And Mecca is like five ten. Kelsey's tall. It's like, huh? But, you know, the question is, did this man do this or not? If this man did it, yes, he should go to jail. Did this man do it because he was trying to stop a fight and shot the gun up in the air? Not exactly, because if you shoot a gun up in the air, it's not going to land on her foot. 
How did the bullets get in her foot? It had to be aimed towards her, her, her foot or her leg at least. Let's not be, you know, let's not assume that this is a Illuminati thing. Because some people's like, you know, this was Megan's initiation to, to, you know, be accepted to Illuminati for fame and fortune. Get shot in the, in the, in the ankles twice. Come on. What, and you can't wear shoes? Come on. High heels at that? Mm -mm, a woman ain't going to go through all that. You know, she may just chop her hair off, but come on. But... If he didn't do this, it's not fair if he goes to prison and he didn't do it. And then they're not only talking about facing up to 22 years in prison, but a possible deportation back to Canada. How he going to make money? You know, if he didn't do this, if it was Kelsey, then he should not have to take the rap. He, he needs to take the stand. If he's innocent of this crime, Daystar Peterson, a.k.a. Tory Lanez, you better take the stand. And with that being said, I'm signing off. Thank you for listening. Share, subscribe, comment, like, hit the notification bell, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.